Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Today we're going to do a little thrift store adventure, see what we can find inside of a local donation center. Let's check it out. One of the first areas I always kind of start off looking at is the area where they put stuff that they think is collectible. Because if they thought it was cool, oh heck, maybe somebody else will too. Just kind of doing a little browse, lots of figurines in this area. Some freaky looking masks. Nothing says 1980s like a mask of a person wearing a piano hat. <laughs> Sadly, a lot of these things that were sold as keepsakes or collectibles really aren't that collectible to most people nowadays. But the occasional thing, like you never know if you're going to have like a nice bronze statue. This is actually, um, that looks like it's Murano glass. Is is silly as this thing is for $14.99 that might have come from Italy <laughs> that's hand-blown glass and uh, as much as it doesn't look like too much if you go to um, Murano and go through some of the glass blowing factories a piece like that probably would have been several hundred dollars so kind of neat that's not a bad price right there funky looking geometric fox it looks like around the corner and we've got i don't know what this is looks like that's the head to it maybe it's uh oh it's for putting your wine bottle in i was like why is there a decapitated chicken there anyway it's kind of neat not that it's a decapitated chicken but <laughs> anyway you know um saw this kind of a cool piece this is a handmade piece of pottery looks like it's hand fired and hand glazed it's um a pretty heavy piece. I don't know how functional that would be. For $6.99, I mean, somebody had to make this by hand. It's unsigned. Maybe it was a class project or something. Anyway, kind of a neat little piece. And in the right setting, that might make a nice display. If you want to impress your friends, you could just come to a store like this and buy all the trophies you want. Like, when were you a uh, captain of a band? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but the trophy doesn't lie. Skiing trophies. Um, I do sometimes like to find the ones for like motorcycle or car shows. There's one for when you catch a little fish. All joking aside, this is a 1950s West German miniature grandfather clock. Uh, it winds up with a key and it would have had a pendulum, which it looks like it's in there. It's fallen in. That is probably worth about, you know, 40 bucks or so. Their price at the thrift shop, $7.99. Kind of a cool little thing. Even if you have a little dollhouse or something, that'd be a really cool accessory, especially if you have a working grandfather clock in there. The assortment of bags of stuff. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find the ones where the, the toy cars are in or maybe pens, because I have had luck and found some nice fountain pens on occasion. Don't see any in these bags, but I will keep looking. thought I'd try my luck on this side. Crystal bowls. You know, the amount of times I've had people try and sell me crystal and I just never buy it. I mean, here it is sitting here, 14 bucks. Somebody's crystal set. Pyrex looks like it's all picked clean. Don't see much for Pyrex in here at all, but cute little cookie jar. A nut with a little squirrel on top. Abigail would appreciate that. Some of these lamps are pretty wild. This one's obviously a kid's lamp. I don't know what's going on here. The lady's dumping out her basket of water and I'm guessing that lit up and <laughs> continued down. Now yeah, she's got an eagle hanging out, maybe tacking here and a uh, decapitated wolf head. You know, a typical day in Canada. I find this location, which is kind of by the university um, in our downtown area, always ends up with some interesting art. This is an original piece that somebody's done on canvas. Well, that's kind of neat. And you've got the toucan next to it. It's a nice, colorful, bright piece. And what are they asking for? 
somebody put a lot of effort into this at one point. Now you can buy it for 12 bucks. Looks like it was on their wall for a while. Made its way around their house. Oh yeah, look, canvas has been stitched up. That's been on a few uh, dorm rooms, I'm sure. I don't often look at the furniture in these areas, mainly because I don't like to get into bigger things, but this caught my eye. This is a mid-century modern teak and vinyl chair. And yes, that's real wood. Teak, of course, is super hot, mid-century modern. Nothing wrong with that. Somebody has um, added some L brackets here because it must have been getting a little wiggly on them. The price on this teak chair, $9.99. Um, at a sort of mid-century store, you might see this for around 100 bucks or so. There's definitely a few things here today that uh, there's money to be made from. But a uh, nice little mid-century chair like that, that's a great deal for 10 bucks. It's weird. Somebody decided against using these drawer poles. They look like mushrooms, don't they? Seven bucks for a set of drawer poles. I couldn't imagine what you put those on. Maybe somebody with a different fashion sense than I, or maybe somebody who's doing a Smurfs themed bedroom circa 1984 would want that. This little brass lantern. 10 bucks. Oh, I remember having this. Talking Battleship, that was a fun game. They've got a few little bits here. This is uh, um, garden scale aristocrat trains. Number one gauge train track. No train, but still kind of neat. And look, there's 1980s Surfer Ken. <laughs> Whoa, dude, how'd I end up in this plastic bag, man? Must have been quite the afternoon. A lot of these little figures that probably cost a hundred bucks or more new. This, I don't know. I don't know anybody that buys those things. Maybe you're watching. Maybe you're the only one. Pop vinyl. Had a bunch of those at one point. Well, they do have like a 1960s era Meccano set, which is the same essentially as a Rector. Uh, this has a little motor with it, so you could build a motorized crane. You know, considering all the stuff it does, $39 is probably not a bad price, but that's getting close to, uh, that's pretty much retail for as a collectible on that, so there's no no money to be made there. Scribbage. There's a few old items that turn up here. That's why I check in, you never know, right? And what's in the showcase? A random sword, decorative sword. The old Robin Hood album. Uh, somebody donated a coach purse. That's pretty swanky, if it's a real one, which I'm sure, I don't know, looks real to me. There's a Snoopy High Wire Act. That's pretty cool. Autograph football back there. Not a whole lot for me, though. Although, I'll be some, there are some pretty cool things. Well, although there were some potentially good buys at the thrift shop, um, I did end up buying this stuff from the estate sale. When I say estate sale, that's very similar to what you'd consider like a, it's not like a garage sale because they don't have signs up. They just call you over and say, hey, we've got a bunch of stuff that's uh, uh, that we're selling because somebody's moving out of the house or they passed away generally. Um, but I got the typewriter, the old toolbox. Uh, anyway, I'll get home and I'll show you guys. That was pretty neat. On the way home, I stopped at a um, estate sale and they've got boxes of old Western and cowboy books, old cameras and albums. There's a sewing machine, kind of in pieces. I've put together a pile of old license plates, this old typewriter, a uh, really nice handheld toolbox, and a bunch of uh, collector pins. They said, I asked if they had any comics or things like that. Ooh, the wind just blew the door closed. And they think they do. So they're going down to the basement to see if they have anything there. But I always find I do better at these estate and garage sales more than I do at the thrift shops, but we'll see. I was asking about the milling machine too. I have no idea. I have no home for that, but maybe that's something my friend Josh could use. So I'll, uh, I'll have to check around and see. That looks like an older one, belt drive. And they're planning on putting it online, I guess. But pretty cool. You never know what's in all these boxes. I'm gonna check over in their charity pile there and see if there's anything over there. I could probably buy off them too. This looks like a typewriter. Or, oh, no, just an old. Edmonton Telephones case. Neat. Well, we'll keep doing some scrounging and see what we can come up with. So 
So here's what I ended up getting. A whole bunch of license plates going back to the 1960s. And the nice thing is they're matching pairs. And where I am, if you have a matching pair like this, you can actually insure your vehicle with the old plate. Um, so a lot of guys probably go crazy for that in my neck of the woods. Uh, some people also craft with these and do other things. Um, they go for t typically around uh, 20 to $40 per set. And so you start adding that up, there's a couple hundred dollars worth of license plates. We got the old Underwood typewriter in really good condition. Uh, the only thing is somebody took the ribbon out, but that's no big deal. I mean, that's pretty easy to get that. Um, beautiful shape, probably retail on that. Um, should go for around a hundred bucks or so. Maybe more if the right person is bidding. This one is in nice condition. Whole bunch of these uh, sort of little collector pins and things of that nature. Some of them from the 78 uh, Commonwealth Games with the Edmonton Telephones, Expo 80, uh, 86. So I'll have to go through there and see those. Those I used to sell them for about, um, you know, two for 10 bucks, about $5 each or so. Um, I'll probably put them up in small batches like a lot of 15 or a lot of 20 each and put them through auction. My favorite piece though was this of all the things. It's a little handmade box um, meant for putting specialty tools and stuff in. So you've got uh, um, some tools actually still in it. But I thought this was just the coolest thing. You know, somebody went to the effort to make this box uh, be perfect for, um, you know, scrapbooking supplies or putting your little collectibles in. So I was uh, quite thrilled to get it. I guess it's also a bonus that it has all these extra drawers with it. Nice little piece like that, little brass handles, um, nice construction on it. Um, I would think that a silly little box like that would probably sell for a couple hundred dollars. I have to line these shelves back up. I don't have them in the right spot right now, but... Um, probably around a $200, I'm talking Canadian, of course, but around a $200 uh, case. Once I get all these drawers back in place here, I'm talking about its virtues, but I think uh, I bumped something in the wrong direction here. It's got these grooves, has these little grooves that need to go in the right position. Anyway, I'll get it figured out. It's not that big of a deal. So there we go. Nice little... Uh, brass edge toolbox typewriter i paid uh 200 total for all of this and i think we'll be able to double up maybe a little bit better maybe four or five hundred dollars worth of stuff out of here if it goes for what i think it will so all in all pretty decent day well i hope you enjoyed today's adventure i'm going to go inside and sort some pins i found a few license plates that might work on some of my old cars and uh we call it a day so thanks again for watching guys we'll see you all soon don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and like the video Bye for now, guys.